examples of how um, people are using Malloc. Uh, and then hopefully uh, kind of have a discussion at the end uh, about next steps and how we can kind of build a community uh, of Malloc users and potential uh, Malloc users. Um, so I'll firstly go through the uh, announcements. I think there's too many people here and it's great to see such a, a large amount of people joining the call. Um, but hopefully you can announce yourself in the chat and also sign into the agenda, that'd be great. Um, for the announcements, um, the Naples conference, uh, Caitlin, do you want to go jump into this? Yeah, I'll try and run through these really quickly since we have a pretty packed agenda. Um, but registration is now open for our annual conference in Naples. If you are planning to attend, we would encourage you um, not just to register soon, but um, perhaps more importantly, to book your hotel if you have not done so. Um, additionally, we have two travel scholarships this year for folks who do not have institutional funding to attend the conference. The information um, regarding the criteria and the application process is on the website. I will put a link in the notes document. Um, and then one last annual conference related update is that um, though we are sold out of gold sponsorships, we still have sponsorships available at um, the silver and bronze levels. And I'll include a link to that as well. Great, thanks, Caitlin. Okay, onto the main part of the agenda. So we're gonna move over to Madoc and we're gonna start with John Baker. Can I pass over to you? Oh, I think you're on mute. So can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Yeah. Thanks. As I say, um, yeah, thanks for the uh, opportunity to raise a bit of awareness about it on this on this uh, community call. Really appreciate it. Um, the, um, the what we hope to do uh, today is just to give everyone a flavour of uh, of Maddock with the case studies that we have from Ghent National Library of Wales and State uh, Library of Berlin. Um, it's quite a powerful platform, and so there's a lot um, that we won't be able to cover today, even for people using Maddock, they're probably not all aware of all the potential uses. So even people who are presenting today might find this, might, might learn something from the other presenter sessions. Um, so we're, we're also interested in exploring, as, as Glenn mentioned, how we can build a community for Maddock beyond the initial users. And um, we have said this cause a chance to test the waters of what, what interest might be out there. And, and we'll have a discussion towards the end of the session. Uh, about that and how we might maintain momentum for Maddock through a through a bit larger community. Um, so we have um, originally Maddock was built by Digerati as part of three projects that we had on the go that had a lot of crossover. So there was the uh, National Library of Wales uh, crowdsourcing platform called TORF, which I'm sure Paul will talk about uh, later. Um, there's the uh, Indigenous Digital Archive, and then there's the Royal Society Science in the Making pilot. All of these projects were very diverse in terms of the use cases, but um, but we did see an opportunity to build a single platform that could drive these projects. Uh, why why did we need a new platform? The, the, the key reason really was that the the data that we wanted to capture through annotation was was quite complex and quite complex in terms of structure and diversity in terms of the data models you such you use things such as linked data and so one of the defining elements of the initial Maddock platform was this idea of uh, what we're calling the capture model which enabled us to define and apply different models uh, as, as part of the uh, setting up of a, of a crowdsourcing or annotation project um, the name Maddock actually comes from um, Welsh folklore. Uh, in interestingly, the uh, a Welsh prince who sailed uh, to America and founded some Welsh Native American tribes, so the story goes. Uh, so this was like a nice nod to the National Library of Wales and the Indigenous Digital Archive uh, as, as, founding, as founding partners. Uh, and the name has just stuck and we've kept with it and everyone seems to be quite happy with it. So no, no plans to change it. Um, so after we delivered those projects, we they they were all delivered successfully by that initial uh, version of Maddock, but we 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 ripped through quite a lot of functionality very quickly and decided at, after those projects to take a step back and rationalise the architecture, make it more maintainable, uh, configurable, and, and extensible, uh, as well as polishing up some elements of the user experience. Um, so some of this work has also been was done in collaboration with the Ghent University and the Clarier Consortium. We're also presenting later. Um, we we did some work with them to create also to create some more so configurable workflows to support quite a range of crowdsourcing and scholarly scenarios, which Lisa and Davy will give you a taste of later on. 
Um, the first version we used Omeka S, it kind of got us going quite quickly, but it's been constraining us in a number of ways. So we abandoned using Omeka S and the whole platform now sits independently using a more modular approach to make uh, further development more straightforward. Um, this is the Maddox 2 release, which is now facilitated projects for Ghent, National Library of Wales, State Library of Berlin, uh, Getty Research Institute have also been using it, and um, and soon IDA will migrate from the original version to, uh, to Maddox 2 as well. Um, so in terms of Maddox, it is an, it's an open source uh, platform. Uh, we have, we've kind of been keeping it a little bit sort of uh, quiet in terms of um, trying to encourage other people to contribute at this point because we wanted to make sure it was stable and get the second version architecture right. Uh, but we're kind of getting there now, so we're, we will be more open to invite external contributions. Um, the way that we see the, um, the operating model for that is that Digiwati would provide sort of architectural governance and also facilitate stakeholder engagement to drive the overall roadmap to ensure that we have cohesion moving, moving forwards. Um, so yeah, we're looking to create some uh, user work groups in the in the spring, which Paul will talk about shortly. Uh, towards the end of the session, when we discuss the community building, uh, so that's really all I was going to say. Really, just to get over, get uh, get things kicked off. Uh, I don't know whether um, anyone has any questions or whether we just go straight into the the use cases. There should be plenty of time um, towards the towards the end of the session for questions. So maybe we could we could sort of get going and I'm happy to take questions at the end. Um, so uh, let's quickly check the chat. All right, okay. Uh, that seems okay then. So I'll pass on to uh, uh, Lisa and, and Davey who are going to talk through some of the uh, Claria use cases. I was just having a chat with Lisa about um... And apparently they're having a few technical problems. I wonder if we could switch uh, to Andre to do first and then go back to Ghent, uh, if that's possible. Okay, I'll be the next or? That would be great if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah, thank you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Andre Buchmann. I'm from uh, State Library of Berlin. And um, I prepared a short uh, presentation. Maybe it's better just uh, to, to start and um, that uh, you will see some some images parallel to to my speech and uh, it will be just easier to just a moment i'll start it yeah do you see it yes the full screen yeah or not we see the no, we, we can see the yeah the presenter uh, for you Okay, doesn't I think it doesn't matter. No, it's fine. Just, yeah. just uh, we started um, to work with Madoc around three years ago, and um, as John already said, uh, we started with the old one. It was um, the Madoc based on uh, Omega S, and uh, for for our goals, it was um, not um, enough powerful because uh, normally we have. Uh, big collections and uh, with Omeka S it was not very product productive to to work with uh, with the Omeka and um, uh, I, we just noticed that uh, Madoc started to to change their system and um, after some changes we, we we got the new version version 2 and uh, after version 2 it was possible to work with the bigger collections um, and uh, now we use the last one, version 2.08, uh, waiting for a new one. Um, and um, some, uh, some data about uh, our collections at that moment, uh, how it works. Normally, we have old collections written um, uh, or old collections and um, in they placed in different um, old applications and we need to move it from uh, from this old application that never can um, maintain to a new to a new world uh, and parallel we want not to display only images but uh, to make it um, possible to annotate data and so on that's why we just migrate our collections from typical um, database structure to IIIF 
and then just try to find some someone who uh, who can uh, help us because um in this case uh we try to find a group of people find we found him, uh, no one and that's why we found uh, Madoc uh, Digirati in this case, and uh, we are working with Digirati. Which collections we have uh, at that moment? Um, there are three collections. One of them, the biggest one, uh, has uh, 13,000 manifests and uh, more than uh, half a million images. Um, you see all these um, uh, links, uh, they are all available and um, you can just um, take a look uh, and uh, try to navigate and uh, to, to search uh, the information there and uh, take a look how, how it looks like the uh, manifests and, and so on. Um, there was some differences um, or some difficulties, better to say, with the first two collections. The difficult was, or the problem was that um, we have it in two languages, Lao and English, and Thai and English. And uh, um, all you know, both of these languages, Lao and Thai, are not supported with a Postgres database. And that's why sometimes the search are not so fast like an, in a supported um, Postgres um, languages. But uh, it's stable, it works, it's possible to find everything in, in those languages too. Uh, then I want to show some, some uh, images, uh, some screenshots, how it looks like, uh, for example, with a search, one image I want to display um, with a um, uh, Digurati, we edit it's, it's an extra feature. We added the uh, footer, uh, the header, and the footer. Uh, we have our private <laughs> footer and header. I, I'll show how it looks like. For example, we have footer. Uh, we have uh, header, like in uh, this, like in our family, like in uh, another our um, cross Asia pages and footer. Uh, to uh, maybe um, it's possible um, with the existing version. It's possible just to integrate extra extra buttons. Like uh, here, for example, I just integrate an extra dynamic button, uh, and you can just go from Digi right from Madoc um, platform to another one, and. Um, Maybe I have I prepared a list of um, um, a list of improvement list, but I think we can just talk about it later in, the, in our discussion and uh, what we. <laughs> I, I I was not uh, uh, very sure um, is the uh, <laughs> a place where we can discuss it Here again some some our improvements list where we want. Um, uh, to I see think, in the next version. I think Paul's going to cover some some of the current plans, so you can bring it up towards the end if you like. You know, we can have a little discussion about it. That that should be fine. Mm. No, maybe later. Uh, uh, I just uh, stop on it, and that's a short presentation uh, of uh, and uh, we're working forward, and uh, new collections will come soon uh, in our. Madoc uh, repository. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Andre? Um, Paul, would you be willing to go next? I think we're still having some technical problems over uh, with, I think Dave is still having a little trouble with his setup. I'm here. Oh, yeah, yeah, hey. yeah. <laughs> uh, that okay. was stressy. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful timing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm not Steffi, I'm Davey. Um, I'm, I'm using a, a different computer. So I'm quickly going to check. Um, so I guess all presentations have been done. Uh, we've just done um, SBB. You're 
welcome to go next if you would like if you're ready i am actually quickly gonna check um you can you can do you can go last if you want a bit more time should be okay i think and you see my screen the guitar yep. project okay super okay so hi everyone um so i'm davy from from Gen cdh um a bit ironic that my computer didn't do its duty but um i just briefly want to present three projects um the first one so from Gen cdh we've been setting or are setting up a couple of projects now. The first one is the Hitoyanism project, which also was a co-funder of the, the Matic development. So it's actually our, our pilot project. Now this project revolves around um, witness uh, interrogations, so historical documents, 17th, 18th, 19th century. So what we've done in this project is we we have three collections, um, all. Uh, with different localities or connected to different localities in Belgium with these witness interrogation documents. Um, and for each of these collections, we've set up um, different projects. So uh, this is where you can see our projects. Um, so a couple of have been done. This is one that is still ongoing. Um, so this is from Antwerp, as you can see, um, it's still in progress. Uh, not a lot have been started. But um, what I wanted to show you is if we have a look at the collection um a way that we actually or what is really a big asset of, of Maddox is that we've used the important metadata um from the collection to actually let users decide on what they want to uh, contribute so it's it's a simple transcription project but say for example i only want to have we have a couple of metadata so the language the, the number of pages for example so say I only want um, the documents in Dutch and say I'm, I have a lot of energy and I want something with 15 pages, um, I can select and then this way um, can find the documents. Um, and so if I go to this one, as you can see, it's a, it's a simple transcription project, but um, I can start transcribing. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Now, another, asset I want to show you um, is, so I use the, um, the facet search, but actually, say for example, I'll have a look at the Bruges collection, and if I do a search again, and I do a keyword search, and I'll just look for the town where I grew up, um, I'm actually searching in all the transcribed documents, so this all these documents in this collection containing the locality of Tilt, um, I can identify. So it's it's also a way of um, exposing the collection to people who might be interested. Um, so this is the first project, the Getuigenissen project. Um, now we have other projects. And um, so the second project I want to briefly present is Huis van Alleen. Um, this is in the context of the Ghent mapped or Ghent enriched uh, project, which, which is actually a collaboration between um, eight uh, Ganthian uh, glams. So um, the first pr project is connected to Huis van Alleen. Now Huis van Alleen is the museum for everyday life. So they have um, everyday life in the 20th century and they use a particular part of their collection, which is, I really find a very cool project, is they use um, everyday objects from their collection uh, for, um, memory work, as to say, you can, as, for example, a social worker or a nurse, you can, for example, uh, use objects from their collection, go to a retirement home and, for example, work with people with dementia and use these objects as a way to instigate reminiscences, uh, memories um, with these people. Now, I'm going to have a quick look at the at the um, collection. So as you can see, we imported this collection in Maddox as well. As you can see, it's like it's children's toys, it's um, parlor games, it can be clocks, coffee grinders, so every everyday objects. Now, this collection, currently they only have an Excel with limited metadata, so fairly obvious they want to um, enrich this collection with um, more metadata to be able for social workers, for example, to 
go and look for objects more uh, targeted. So we or are setting up, it's, it's set up, but we have to launch the project. Um, but what we actually did is um, made this little capture model. Um, and it, it's fairly simple. So we ask uh, volunteers if they can say, what is the team? So we made a little drop down um, for this. Also, we want to have a more specific date. So it's uh, decades here. So we made a drop down again, and then a fourth, uh, no, a third uh, field is just to, to give a better description. And then the last field is an alternative title. So it's just best basic metadata um, as a way to disclose this uh, collection. Now in a second phase, which would be a second project in Maddox, we also want to use this collection and add memories um, to this collection. Um, so actually enrich the collection even further. So this was the second project and I hope I'm not using up too much time, but I guess I'm, I'm quite okay. Um, the last project, it's also connected to the um, to the Ghent Enriched. So this is from the AMSAP, AMSAP ESG. It's the Ghent Institute uh, for Social History. Um, now, this is one project we're setting up, and it's connected to the Gensa Morten, which was a newspaper. And we found, or AMSAP found, a, um, a nice photo collection, mainly 1980s. So this collection, it's um, I think it's over 200 uh, photographs, and it's always two sides. So you have a, Gent, a location in Ghent, um, and on the back of this photograph, you have some something could could be written. It could be a location or the photographer or whatever. But so quite unstructured. So um, with AMSAP, we've set up uh, this project in Maddox as well. Um, where we want to, again, um, allow to collect some basic metadata and then feedback back to their uh, content management uh, system and their own collection system. So as you can see, none of the um, pictures have been started uh, yet because we're still setting up, of course, the project. Um, but again, let me take this one and let you let me quickly demonstrate um, what we've done now, it's actually quite cool. So a basic metadata we want to harvest is actually the location, but we've actually um, uh, added our own Ghent Gazetteer. So it's actually an external vocabulary with the Ghent Gazetteer. So it's basically like a, a dictionary with unique identifiers for each and every place connected or in Ghent. Um, so as you can see, it's quite a long list. You can, of course, also search in the list. So um, we connected this Gen Gazetteer uh, to Maddox. Um, and then we've had, uh, or we have another, a couple of other fields. Um, say, for example, the location is not in the Gen Gazetteer. We can ask for another uh, location. Um, then we have, uh, or we ask volunteers to uh, add a date, maybe if some people are um, visible on the photograph to identify them. Um, make a transcription, uh, for example, of the text written on the back, um, possibly if there's a photograph or photo studio um, written on the back. So this is, again, it's a quite straightforward metadata project, but um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a nice use of, uh, of Maddox for this, uh, this collection. We found rather small collection, but um, nice. Uh, anyway. So these were briefly the three projects that I wanted to present to you. So I now give um, the word or uh, the floor to uh, my colleague Lise, who has been working with Maddox in an educational context, so with uh, students and researchers. So Lise, the floor is yours. Yes, if you could stop sharing your screen, maybe Davey, then I can share. Okay, great. Okay. So uh, um, a project in an educational setting that I wanted to present uh, is we just finished this. It's uh, building upon an educational project that we did last year. It's the Votes for Women project, which was a British feminist periodical. And so we used Maddox actually as a sort of co-creative way, a co-creative platform for students to collaboratively, 
effectively design uh, a crowdsourcing platform and really ingest their own ideas into it and how they would um, create a crowdsourcing platform. So the students started off with limited digital literacy as it's not really uh, integrated within uh, our uni currently. And so I gave them a two hour Madoc uh, workshop and um, yeah, that actually quite, went quite well. The students, which were six in total, so not a lot, they were able to quickly use Madoc and create a project and be really creative as you see on this <laughs> project page, um, maybe a bit even too creative. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, uh, did, they designed this um, project, ingested all AAAF manifests, um, and created a capture model to identify poetry or some other information which they thought was useful, such as a title, author, or form. So uh, the goal was to design a crowdsourcing project, but it was more so uh, an edu educational use of Medoc. And then uh, maybe if I'll quickly show the back end, that's, just, that's where they um, yeah, basically collaborated together, imported the manifests, uh, created collections, and created uh, projects. Um, so I think it was really positive that uh, that the students were able to work with Meta quite quickly after a two-hour workshop uh, and do all this stuff as admin themselves. So it was also a bit of a user test in, in that sense. Um, and so we also found out you could really set up complex capture models using Madoc. Uh, that's another thing we, we got from, from these workshops. And uh, yeah, that's something Madoc does really well, complex capture models. So the next project was a scholarly project. So we've at Ken Center for Digital Humanities, we've actually had quite a lot of uh, researchers who want to create a simple scholarly edition using some of the AAAF benefits, such as deep zoom, high quality, and then basically annotated. And we've tried to use Madoc as a sort of way to simply um, create a scholarly edition, edition and publish it online. And I think there can be a lot of potential for Madoc to, to become a sort of digital scholarly publication platform. Um, but currently, uh, we're still lacking some interactions of Madoc on um, basically de defining the annotations and defining some better interactivity. Uh, first steps have already been set with the annotation styles, but um, yeah, I think it's mostly just gathering the annotations that's going really well at this point but um, it's displaying the annotations within Madoc itself in an interactive way. Uh, so for example, for this project, it would be, um, it would be the, yeah, it would be annotations and translations and transcriptions of uh, Japanese text. Um, so yeah, that's still something it could improve on. Um, we've noted, and it's also it takes quite a lot of time for us to set up these enrichment projects and to monitor it. Uh, and we've currently rather limits a bit of, of at times of resources to support it all. Um, and then finally, I wanted to uh, quickly say when doing a workshop on Medoc at the Europeana conference, so with a lot of cultural heritage institutions present, uh, they found that annotation, participation, IIIF, metadata, and crowdsourcing, they deemed that as the most important features of Medoc. So IIIF was quite up high there as, as they really saw that as one of the most positive aspects of Medoc, even though the workshop was not really about IIIF. So I think there's a lot of, they saw a lot of potential in the collaborative aspect of Medoc and how it could improve quality of metadata. And that's my dog. <laughs> but yeah, we've currently are a bit limited to support it. Okay, I've tried to see it all quite quickly. I'll stop now. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lisa. That was, that was really good. Um, is there any questions for, for Lisa? I think um, you know the fact that uh, Madoc is built from the ground up on Triple IF is a is a, another key differentiator, which uh, I could have mentioned in the introduction actually. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I'll pass on to uh, to Paul um, if you're if you're ready, Paul. Yeah, ready to go. Just um...
can you uh, see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. Can you yeah. see my notes as well, or just? Uh, we can see as well. You can. Yeah. Let's try that again. Is that better? Yeah. I think, yeah, that's it. Brilliant. Right. So um, I'm going to run you through a brief overview of the type of projects we've been doing with MADOC here at the National Library for the past couple of years. So back in 2015, we'd been working on a number of different crowdsourcing projects to enhance our collections all of which were very successful, but also required a lot of resources, and none of them worked together or were linked together. All the data that was created was, and still does to this day, live in silos. The projects on this page are the Wales at War, which was a linked data project looking at school communities adding data about soldiers from their local war memorials. Kenevin was a geotagging and rectification project of tithe maps, and Cymru 1900 was a project to create a gazetteer of Welsh place names from the 1900s. So as part of our continued uptake and development of IIIF, and as a way to access our digitised collections, we created a project to transcribe in the Welsh Book of Remembrance using a version of Mirador we had mod modified slightly in-house. I say we, Glenn did most of the work there in fairness. This allowed users to draw a box over a name and fill in pre-selected fields such as name, rank, etc. related to each soldier. Once complete, we had a searchable list of every single soldier in the book, this formed part of the Wales Centre for Peace Remembrance activities. Whilst this worked great for this project, we used it again for a university admissions project for their centenary. But we realised it was very specific to this specific need and wasn't a robust solution. It also wouldn't allow us to do all the things we had done in previous projects. We needed something more flexible that we could throw Trip Life manifests into and create different projects with different outputs. So at the end of 2016, we were able to secure funding from the Welsh Government. We put out a public procurement for a bilingual crowdsourcing platform for Wales. Digirati won the contract, and I believe that's where Maddox was born. Yeah. Since the initial platform was created from the brief, we have been through three iterations of the Maddox platform. The original, which I think was version 0.5, version 1, and now what they call version 2, which is actually only going fully live with us this week. Over the years, we have run a number of different projects on the platform. This one was our original and the first project we ever launched. It was specced in the brief as one of the main outputs. We wanted to ask people to transcribe the information from the Cardiganshire War Tribunals. This was completed relatively quickly and was one of our most popular projects. It was visual, it was quick to do, and it was interesting to a lot of people. Once the project was finished, we were able to use a viewer on our NLW website to allow users to not only view the records for the first time, but also to search them for the names, addresses, dates, and occupations of the people within it. Feedback on the War Tribunals project identified some issues, such as not being able to search across manifests, the fact we have to embed the outputs in an existing web page, and the reliance at the time of having to export all the annotations and convert them to store in a separate place. One of the hopes we have for the latest version of the platform is that we are hoping to be able to go from a crowdsourcing project to a presentable data set be much quicker, smoother, and integrated. This is the Gwilym Livingstone Evans Photographic Collection, and probably it's the longest running project we have done. It started on the first platform, and it will probably be live on what we call version three. We are looking at implementing more of his images uh, in the near future. It was an opportunity for us to get information about people and memories of communities in North Wales. We were really lucky with this project to get a couple of volunteers who lived in the area and remembered a lot of the people and events. And they have almost single-handedly identified everyone in these photos. Currently, the data from this project is not available to view, sadly, and it's just sitting on the platform. At the moment, on our live site, which is running Maddock 1, what we call version 2, we have three live projects ongoing and quite a few hidden or older projects, but of similar types. These three sort of outline the three types of projects we've been predominantly running over the last couple of years. 
The photo books are a collection of albums with very little metadata. We are using Wikidata, Wikidata identifiers in both Welsh and English through the platform using the Wikidata API to outline and tag parts of the images. That should make discovery easier in the future. And as the collections are so varied, it may allow us to start a database of generic marketing images. For example, if we want an image of a dog, we can search and find the crop image of a dog from within the photo books quite quickly. Originally, we started off using the Library of Congress subject headings, but found that people struggled to find the correct tags. For example, if you want to tag a car, you need to use automobile, and that also covered other vehicles. Whilst Wikidata tags are varied, they are at least consistent. So as part of our ongoing work with Wikidata, we moved to tagging most of our projects with Wikidata tags. We are also looking at other projects using the Maddox platform with Wikidata for tagging up Wikicommons paintings. The second project is a continuation of the Gwyllin Livingstone Evans photos from Brian of Stiniog. And the third is a basically text-only transcription project transcribing the diaries of Wales' best-known artist, Cuffin Williams. All of these are nearing completion of three quite different types of data collection models. However, looking forward, these are both screenshots from the latest version of Maddock running on our live server. But on a beta domain, both of these projects we are hoping to launch to a closed group as soon as possible. Should have been last week or probably be next week. Um, the first one is the chain meteorological records, which will be transcribed. This is our first foray into scientific data. And to be honest, the data is too complex. We made a mistake picking this to be our test first project on the new platform. It's taken quite a few months to get the changes we need with different workflows and terminology. And getting this project just right has been a bit of a journey mainly due to the fact that the content varies so much from page to page and having to work around that and trying to fit it into a content model has been a learning curve. Second project is our first partnership project. This will host collections from three archives in South Wales which have little to no metadata. The aim of this project is to enhance their collections metadata through transcription and Wikidata tagging. The outputs will then be fed automatically back into their catalogues to enable better discovery for their own users. One side effect of this project is the introduction of IIIF to record offices for these and hopefully wider collections in the future. Looking further ahead, we are excited to look at the possibilities of using Maddox to re for research projects with individual researchers. We're hoping to use the sites feature of, of the project to start displaying outputs from both these projects and previous projects. And we are about to embark on a project to develop a central annotation store to link our crowdsourcing projects with our other IIIF annotation projects. We currently have projects planned with the Natural History Museum for an academic research project, and next year we're going to launch our biggest project to date, which is to transcribe the Women's Peace Petition, which currently resides in the Smithsonian Institute, uh, but will soon be making its way back to Wales. This will involve geotagging and transcription, as expected to have a lot of interest both in Wales and in the States. Lastly, we're also looking at training an AI Welsh language voice to text transcription model on BBC audio content. Due to the complexities of the content and the AI models used, um, we're not yet sure if we're going to be using Maddox for this, but we're hoping to. Uh, that's a very quick seven minutes, 54 seconds overview of uh, what we're doing at the library. I'll stop sharing my screen if I can. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, any any questions for Paul? In the chat, okay. Quite an impressive range and uh, depth of activity going on in terms of crowdsourcing in the National Library of Wales. Um, hopefully, it comes across. You can everyone's getting a feel for the the breadth of uh, applications from from Maddock from from these examples. Um, maybe we'll move on Paul do you, would you like to take the reins and talk a little bit about where we're at in terms of current developments yep sure um I will just share my screen uh can everybody see my screen okay yeah uh, excellent okay um all right so uh my name is uh Paul Mullahan um not well, we can, but uh, we share uh, a few of the uh, the letters, so it's always confusing when talking to Paul. But uh, um, I, yeah, before I kind of dive in, obviously uh, my role uh, with Maddock over the past twelve months or so has been uh, trying to help with the product management of the platform. 
Um, and uh, yeah, just getting to grips with all of the different use cases. So it's really good to see um, those examples from across the work that Andre is doing at SBB and Lisa and Davy and, and obviously Paul uh, at uh, National Library of Wales. And then, as you say, John, hopefully it's given everybody a bit of more of a sense of what Maddox can provide. Um, there is more information obviously available and I'll share some links at the end of the, uh, the chat. So in terms of what I'm going to cover, it's just going to be really brief, but um, hopefully uh, give you a sense of what we're doing at the moment in terms of in-progress work, um, some updates that are coming, um, and then finally really just to talk a little bit about some ideas that we have around the next steps to try and build uh, a matter community, so to get some feedback from yourselves and ideas and input um, is what we're, we're trying to hope to do uh, today. Um, okay, so in terms of where we are right now, we'll, the team have been working on uh, a number of different strands of work that will form uh, the next, essentially the next release um, of uh, of Maddox. Um, so I think obviously, uh, as Paul mentioned, uh, there's been a series of iterations and uh, uh, obviously uh, some some users are on the latest versions, which are 2.0 um, and others are on, on different ones. But um, what we've been doing um, as part of the upcoming 2.1 release, which is almost ready to go, um, is to introduce a series of uh, project improvements that relate to some of the work that uh, Lisa and Davey have talked about from a GEMP perspective, also some of the work that's going to support uh, Paul's new projects going live at National Library of Wales, and also some work that we're doing for the Indigenous Digital Archive, which I'll talk about uh, in, in a moment. Um, we've also been addressing some technical improvements, um, which uh, you know address technical debt, uh, but also looking to try and modernise and improve some of the shared components that Maddox itself uses. Um, and to try and refine the implementation of the platform as we as we progress. So some of these things include uh, a new API to support the capture models, which obviously people have been discussing. Um, and I guess the uh, the main thing is that that improves how that whole capture model process is managed in the back end and it simplifies future enhancements and so on. Um, we've also recently introduced Canvas Panel, which is um, another open source uh, viewer component that we use to render resources. So again, it's IIIF native. Um, and um, I think the, the key thing with this is obviously Maddox uh, integrates with and uses other open source components and libraries. And, and in that way, it's benefiting from uh, some of the work that we're doing and the community are doing more widely in terms of uh, new features and functionality that, that are available to support. Um, some of the different aspects that Maddox itself uh, provides. There's also been a series of um, other new improvements, like adding in new page blocks to allow people to customize the sites and the uh, the pages that they're developing as part of those sites. There's new theme options and so on. Um, some of the, uh, I guess, the larger areas of visible UI and functional enhancements that are coming uh, include um, a new version of the reviewer dashboard. So this is to support uh, those re reviewers either in you know in a crowdsourcing project or in a research project um, so we've been working uh, with and building upon an initial iteration of this reviewer dashboard that we completed last year with the team at Ghent um, and we've been improving that in a number of ways so looking at how the data that surface for reviewer users is presented and giving them some more tools to allow them to find and navigate their way through their work more easily We've also been doing uh, a lot of work on improving the reviewer area itself, so providing more consistency in terms of how information is presented and providing a new and improved UI to support their work and, and also as part of that, giving them a kind of a new focused uh, view uh, to really you know, narrow in on and focus in on some of the detailed reviews that are required for maybe for transcription projects and so on. Um, what else? So we've also um, been working on uh, some export functionality. Now, Maddox has APIs um, to do an awful lot of different things um, and supporting getting data in and out is, is something that that's been able to provide. Um, but in this case, both the National Library of Wales and Ghent had some similar requirements to support uh, or to allow them to kind of gather data 
from the platform uh, to allow them to import it into other systems for reporting and so on. Um, and by combining uh, their separate requirements, we've been able to build a fairly comprehensive solution that allows data to be selected and exported in different forms. So we've got uh, a new UI to support all of that. Um, and uh, that will, yeah, that, that will hopefully provide um, an easier way from an administration point of view to actually get grab this data and, and make that available for others to use. Um, okay, uh, so that's what we're working on right now. And that's part of this 2.1 release, which we're, we're, we're testing and we're almost ready to push the button on. Um, in terms of the, uh, the roadmap and what's coming next, well, um, I mentioned the Indigenous Digital Archive earlier, and obviously, John, you mentioned the fact that as a founding project, um, it's currently, we're, we're working towards uh, bringing it into the new version of Maddox. Um, but a big part of that uh, project will be enhancing Maddox further to bring more discovery elements and making those available within Maddox. So we saw earlier some of the different ways in which searching and faceting works within projects. Um, but uh, this a enhancement will bring in uh, the ability to develop thematic groups or topics through either through manual tagging or machine enrichment and then enable people to um, to search and find and navigate through that uh, through those collections using those uh, tags um, our team uh, I think some of whom are on the call including Heather and Stephen and Alex uh, have been working through uh, the current user journeys across the platform and this is partly in response to issues that have emerged from user testing but also known problems that we need to address um, so there's a series of things in looking at improving just the hierarchy of content the labeling the on-screen information to basically to better support and orient users uh, on the platform um, there are some other things uh, I I just added one or two little things in here. I know obviously we've been talking to the guys at Ghent about uh, potentially introducing polygonal selectors to Maddox to enable selection of different shapes and canvases to support up, up come, some upcoming project requirements. Um, but there's also a series of technical improvements to address some known issues and also some feedback. I, mean, I know Andre has been uh, sending us some issues that he's had and I know obviously there's a few things that you want to discuss as well on that. Um, um, but yes, so the, the final bit really was just to highlight, obviously, you know, we've got all of these uh, roadmap items that we're aware of, but really what, what we're trying to do at this point, I think, is, is to really start to kind of look at developing a wider community of users um, for Maddox um, and to try and achieve that what, what we're looking to do really, or what we're thinking of doing is um, running a couple of user group workshops later in the spring, maybe in April and May, um, which will allow us initially to share more information on Maddox um, and hopefully allow people that are interested to get a better understanding of the platform's capabilities. Um, showcase obviously further how it's been used now. Obviously, we saw some great examples of that today. Um, but it would also then allow us to obviously identify some common gaps, perhaps, or improvements that might actually help support more use of Maddox. Um, and once we've kind of established all of that, we would then like to, to have a further uh, workshop where we iterate on uh, what we've got in terms of that current vision uh, and roadmap for Maddox and, and to help identify shared priorities on the roadmap um, that we could then prioritize. Um, and also we would be looking to think about, you know, different ways that we could identify funding opportunities. Um, and that's really where we'd like to get some input. Um, you know, we're really keen to get some feedback and suggestions about that process and approach and whether that makes sense. Um, and obviously, if people have got other ideas, uh, we'd really love to hear those. Um, so yes, in terms of next steps, if you are interested in, in learning more and would be, you know, are interested in being part of that workshop or getting opportunity to see more of that, um, please do get in touch. Um, my email address is there. Um, in terms of some useful links, there's some links to uh, Maddox documentation there. Um, obviously, Maddox in GitHub. Um, so all of the, uh, the the projects are there and available. Um, the there's also we have a, a a kind of a marketing website which is which is about really just kind of giving you an overview in in more detail of of what the platform can do. Um, so you can visit that. And we also have uh, a Maddox Slack channel which 
to be honest, hasn't been used all of that much, but it's certainly there and it's something that potentially that we might look to use in the future. Um, and that was it. That was all I was going to say, John. Um, Great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. So I think, um, does anybody have any questions or comments for Paul? Maybe anything in terms of the, the roadmap or the, the, the current developments? or even things that aren't on the roadmap that you'd like to highlight at this point, now's the time to do it. <laughs> uh, if anyone has any comments. I've got a quick question about um, uh, geotagging, georectification, mapping, that side of stuff. What's the, um, what's the future? Where are we going with that? Uh, Paul, do you want to comment initially on that? Or, or even Dave, he might have an opinion. Well, um, it's a good question, Paul. Um, we, I mean, it is something that we have uh, done a reasonable amount of work on previously, just looking at some, uh, doing some discovery on what the options are. Um, and we spent a bit of time with the team at Ghent um, and with a number of other uh, projects as well, looking at possibilities around um, about geotagging. Um, now, in terms of next steps on that, um, we are looking at possibly um, having some discussions with some other tools that are already out there that kind of provide some of that functionality. Um, but certainly in the short term, we think that maybe the first area is, is obviously looking at the, um, the improvement to introduce the polygonal um, uh, selectors as a kind of a, as a first step perhaps in that, but it's also... Um, Will it give us a little bit of time to kind of investigate the different options that we could take with that further? Um, I mean, I, I guess we know that there are some project requirements that uh, certainly Ghent have I, have got for um, for that area. So there are definitely things that they would like to do at some point. But how we achieve that, um, we're still trying to work out what the best route forward for that might be. Cheers. Um, I have a small comment uh, or someone else. Mm. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I want uh, just to um, to say that there is many different interesting projects, for example, uh, that uh, I didn't know before. If it's possible just to put it somewhere on a Madoc page or in a IIIF community that for everyone who are interested in, uh, in a Madoc, and just uh, go and scroll through these projects and um, uh, just just to see uh, real examples. For example, we are still not using annotations. We are still in the uh, uh, displaying of images, but we're of course interesting of annotations uh, and um, all the th things. And for us, for example, it's very interesting to see how our colleagues from other libraries already done this uh, this work and uh, yeah that's it that's, Just, yeah that's a good suggestion yeah i was yeah. thinking that we would do that maybe as a follow up to provide a set of links of the projects that have been demonstrated today maybe in other other projects as well that would be a good idea um we could add those and distribute a uh, just on the Google Doc or something, just so everyone can see them uh, as a starting point. And then we have we have some case studies uh, out there on the on the on the Digiarty website, but we don't have an extensive number really. Um, so yeah, there's more we could do on that front. Um, how does everybody feel about the idea of a of a work group? Would would there be a lot of interest in in such an idea idea so that we could sort of bring everyone together, establish a baseline understanding, so everyone understands exactly. What the, plat what the platform does now and what we intend it to do at this point, and then we could sort of do some planning off the back of that. Does, does that sound like a good, sensible approach? Yeah, great. We've got a few positives there. Brilliant. Um, well, what we'll do is if you can, if you're interested in, in being part of that, that initial work group so that you learn more uh, about the platform, then please email Paul and then we can... Um, we, we we can get in touch and, and with dates etc and hopefully we'll do another work group after that to try and understand more about what you'd want to see in the platform in the future as well but i think getting everyone on the same page would be the first step uh, that's what we what we think anyway because 
Uh, it is, we built quite a, a configurable and powerful platform, but that does hide sometimes some of its uh, potential under under a bush, <laughs> under a bushel. So we'll have to uh, sort that out uh, sooner rather than later. Um, got a few more minutes. I see there's a lot of activity in the uh, in the chat now. Um, Can I just ask a question, just while you're reading through the chat. Um, yeah. So is is Maddock generally a hosted solution, or do people install themselves, or are both options available? Is it kind of up to what people want to do? Both options. So we we people can just take it and, and host it themselves, and we can, if if want, if if required, we can provide some support to to uh, on on their own hosting environment, or we can host it for people as well if they'd rather not get get their hands uh, dirty on the technical side. So yeah, those both of those options are available. Okay. Yeah, if anyone is interested in, it, in just trialing it, just let, let us know as well. Give, give drop a drop a line, and we can get some trial versions set up for people to have a have a play. Um, okay. Um, what else have we got? And the, there's some discussion about technical components that Maddock is built on. Um, I don't know. Could somebody else pick this one up? I don't know whether Matt or or Stephen. I, I answered the question in, in chat, so oh, ben had asked if it, what the technical components were. Oh, right. I mean, the front end is basically a React application with a kind of no middleware layer that I can jump into if I'm getting that wrong. But then there's a, a number of kind of um, data management that happens in a kind of Python, Django, REST framework layer, um, but they share a Postgres database across all the services. So things like search and some of the kind of enrichment like OCR or natural language processing are done in the kind of Django REST framework apps, but the core application is all JavaScript. Great. I have like, not maybe, it's not maybe a question, but in my ideal world in the workshop, it would also, we would be able to sort of put all the projects together and maybe learn from each other because we as a, the H Center, we provide digital support across the university, but we're not actually um, built to support crowdsourcing. Um, but so that's why we're collaborating with a lot of cultural heritage institutions. So, but um, what you said, uh, Paul, uh, on the project of the National Library of Wales, I'd be really interested in just uh, maybe hearing more about, uh, yeah, your experiences working with with volunteers and them interacting with Madoc um, and yeah the uh, indeed what also resonated a lot was that sometimes it can take quite a bit of time to really configure the the right capture model we've also had that um, due to the flexibility of Madoc we found that it does take a lot of time and, and it um, to set up stuff, uh, especially if, if if you want to do more com complex things. Um, so yeah, I think we can find commonalities in, in, in such a workshop um, and learn from each other maybe. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Common sort of points of friction in, in using Maddox that, uh, that that would be really useful for us to help, you know, to sort of polish the, the UX experience further for sure. So what, maybe what we'll do then is we'll float um, a, a sort of a, a rough agenda of what we think that workshop should cover and get uh, people's feedback on that um to see what we can what we can do and put some structure behind it uh so yeah we'll take that on as a as a as a as, a, as an action to to pull that together and see get some feedback if that sounds okay um great well we've run out of time um don't want to keep it unless anyone has any other further questions um I just want to say um, a huge thank you to all the presenters and uh, John and everyone for, for pulling this together. It's been a really interesting presentation to see kind of all the developments. Um, so I think, John, you mentioned, um, yeah, who, sh who should we email? Is it Paul M? And it's, can you put the email address in the Google Doc? Not yeah, Paul yeah, can. I just dropped it in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's the other Paul. The other Paul, yeah. <laughs> Yes, great. It's really encouraging to see such interest. Uh, great turnout. So I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, so th thank you very much, everybody, and uh, look forward to hearing uh, more, uh, talking to some of you more about what you might want to do with it next. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.